RAM memories are a key component in a PC, being a determining factor in the performance of computers in general and processors in particular. It is important that you watch this video, as you will discover to what extent the chosen RAM affects the overall performance of your PC. I'm sure the results will surprise you. As we are in an intergenerational period, and many people might be hesitating between buying DDR4 RAM or DDR5 RAM, we are going to test both types of memory, to see if it is worth paying the extra price to build a PC with DDR5. I hope this video is what you were looking for, and I wanted to emphasize that it has been possible thanks to your support. If you want to see more videos like this on the channel, it is vitally important that you subscribe, since the vast majority who watch the videos are not subscribed, and bringing relevant content is complicated if our community does not grow in numbers. See also the description to follow us on other networks, such as TikTok or Instagram, and above all, add our affiliate links from Amazon and Newegg to your bookmarks. That way, despite paying the same price for your online purchases, you will be contributing directly to this channel. The name RAM itself comes from random access memory, which already indicates the reason for its existence. It is in RAM where all instructions and files that are in use are expected to be used at any given moment are loaded. The idea is that the processor can always access data as quickly as possible, and RAM is there for that purpose. It acts as an intermediary between the cache memory of the processor and the internal storage of your PC, which would be your HDD or SSD hard disk. In all the different types of storage you always have to sacrifice one thing, speed or capacity. In the RAM we see a middle ground compared to other types of storage such as hard drives or processor cache memory. In RAM we have average capacities, speeds and latencies, while the processor cache is very fast with practically instantaneous accesses and has little capacity, and the system storage can have a lot of capacity but with a much lower access speed. The main characteristics to look at in a RAM module would be the type, capacity, frequencies, and latencies. If instead of understanding in depth all the characteristics of RAM memory, you want to have help with the purchase of your new PC, visit this other video, where we review the best gaming PCs of the moment. In terms of type, DDR5 RAM modules are now available, a completely new generation, which is also physically different from the previous DDR4 or DDR3, and therefore requires a different type of slot on the motherboard. This is important to know, as you will not be able to mount a DDR5 RAM module on a motherboard and processor that do not support it. The capacity is the amount of GB that each module has. It is measured in GB and obviously tells us how much storage the RAM has. The more space, the more data can be stored in the RAM and the more data will be ready for the processor to instantly access it. Of course, as we will see later in the tests, having more RAM does not necessarily bring more performance in games beyond a certain point. Frequencies, as in any component, tell us how fast the RAM is capable of working. Again, higher frequencies improve performance, as long as the stability of the system can be maintained, since increasing the frequencies often causes instability and errors in the system. RAM always comes with a factory default frequency, and like other components, we are later allowed to tweak these frequencies so that we can boost it. This is done from the motherboard BIOS, by activating the XMP profile. It is very simple to do, and also necessary, if you want to take advantage of the RAM performance with better characteristics. Manual overclocking is also possible, although we would already be talking about more advanced issues that we are not interested in discussing in this video, as they are not interesting for the general public. Finally, we have the very important issue of latencies, known as CAS latency, which are reflected in the CL number that the RAM has, so that a CL40 module will have a latency size of 40, which means that it will take 40 clock cycles to send a data that has been requested. The lower this number, the fewer cycles it will take to access the data. All this can be counterintuitive, since with frequencies we see that the higher the number the better, but with latencies, it is better to keep the number as low as possible. Obviously it is not possible to raise the frequencies too much and lower the latencies too much, as the system is no longer stable. If you've reached this point, I hope you're liking the video. And if so, I would greatly appreciate your subscription. You don't know how much it helps us, and it costs you nothing. Dual channel is the key concept that you should always comply with when choosing your RAM. In home computers motherboards always support dual channel or dual band RAM. This implies that RAM should always be paired, or in other words, you should always install two RAM modules instead of a single one, to take advantage of this dual channel. 
What are the consequences of this? Quite obvious, and almost more important than RAM frequencies in certain situations. A PC will still work perfectly well with a single RAM module that has low frequencies and high latencies, and if you use the computer for office and light tasks there will be hardly any performance differences, but if you are going to use your PC for more demanding tasks such as playing video games, it is important that you take all these issues into account, as the performance differences start to be very important. RAM modules are usually covered with a plastic that in recent years has also come to carry RGB. Well. The main function of these plastics, in addition to aesthetics, is actually to dissipate the heat generated by RAM memories, since the module itself does not require any plastic or RGB to function. This heatsink positively affects the temperatures in the RAM, although as I said, today it has become more of an aesthetic factor and not so much functional. But why is RAM so important in a computer? Well, let's find out below by first comparing different RAM configurations, to find out how much RAM we need in 2022, to learn about the importance of dual channel, and to find out what effect the frequency of a RAM module has on performance. First, let's make comparisons with the most widespread standard today, which is the DDR4. It is currently the one that offers more possibilities and better prices without a doubt. Let's see how much RAM we need and if concepts such as dual channel or frequencies can affect something. We will have configurations of 16 and 32 gigabytes in single or dual channel, and a 2133 or 3200 millihertz. Some of you may be thinking that 8 gigabytes of RAM is not enough, and if you really want to see how 8 gigabytes of RAM works, you can watch this other video, which we released last year to check if it would be enough or not. Today we see that 16 gigabytes are already extremely cheap, around 50 euros, so it doesn't make any sense to mount less RAM right now as long as you want a gaming PC that performs as well as possible. For office or other tasks would be more equal, this comparison is not intended for those uses. All tests will be done in video games, as it is a simple and visual way to check the differences. In all these tests the PC remains the same, and only the RAM configuration has changed. Let's start with the impact RAM capacity and configuration has on games. Starting with Fortnite, Cyberpunk 2077, we have used the embedded benchmark as a means to make the comparisons. In the GTA 5 embedded benchmark, we also see. As we can see, with 16GB DDR4 we are doing very well in terms of capacity, and the 32GB have not offered any improvement in terms of FPS. What does affect is the fact of operating in single channel or dual channel and we see how it is much better to have two modules of 8GB than one single module of 16GB, especially in terms of stability. Let's move on now to look at the frequencies in RAM. Is RAM at 2133 mHz enough? How much an improvement is it to put RAM at 3200 mHz? Again, let's start with Fortnite. We see how in the tests performed the improvement is remarkable. In the Cyberpunk benchmark we also noticed an improvement, although it is not as noticeable to the naked eye. Finally, in GTA 5 we see improvement again. In conclusion, we see that the 16GB in dual module are still super good for gaming, and for the vast majority who do not want super high-end PCs are the best option. But above all, the increase of frequencies in DDR4 RAM gives us enough performance, and seeing that it is free, and very easy to activate through the BIOS, it is well worth it. Check on your PC at what frequencies your RAM is running, and enable the XMP profile in the BIOS if you see that it is not running at its maximum capacity. You can easily check this by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus Escape to open the Task Manager, and then go to the Performance window. Here, in the Memory tab, you can see the characteristics of the installed RAM. I must say that DDR5 RAM modules are still in constant evolution, and we are far away from the numbers that manufacturers are going to reach both in frequencies and latencies, but still, I think it is a good idea to compare the performance difference between DDR5 modules and DDR4 modules. Who knows, maybe the jump is huge and it is worth upgrading to DDR5 today. In this case, as we did with DDR4, we will test 16 gigabytes in single and dual channel, and 32 GB in dual channel. These are the most interesting DDR5 combinations for gaming, the ones you should consider for your PC.
All these configurations will be purchased at 4800 mHz and 6000 mHz to see how the frequencies affect DDR5. Finally, we will compare DDR4 RAM with DDR5 RAM to determine which is the best alternative today. First we will study the amount of RAM needed and the effect of dual channel. Let's start with Fortnite. We see how in the tests performed the improvement is remarkable. In the Cyberpunk benchmark we also noticed an improvement, although it is not as noticeable to the naked eye. Finally, let's go to Battlefield V. Let's now see what happens if we set this RAM to 6000 mHz, to see what effect the frequency increase from 4800 mHz has. Starting with Fortnite. In the case of Cyberpunk, regarding Battlefield V, with these results we see how with DDR5 RAM the frequencies also matter and give performance. In this case, I find it extremely remarkable that the single channel does not perform so bad, in fact, it is very close to the dual channel in tests with 16 GB of RAM. But let's see then what are the differences between DDR4 and DDR5, which one performs better, is it worth the price premium? Again we start with Fortnite. Let's compare all three different DDR4 configurations at 3200 mHz, with the three DDR5 configurations at 6000 mHz. On screen we will be seeing the results with DDR5, and I will add the percentage difference over DDR4, so if you are seeing 5% green, that will mean that in those conditions the DDR5 RAM is giving 5% extra performance. In Cyberpunk, I'm not going to lie, I forgot to test with DDR5 RAM in GTA 5, so we're out of that test. In the end, we have seen how DDR5 RAM does perform better in games, with improvements of around 5-10% to in our tests. Keep in mind that it could change depending on the components of your PC and the game tested. Is it worth the jump? Well, in the lower ranges, and in PCs of less than 1000 euros, I would say no. From 1500 euros, in PCs with last generation components, the DDR5 will be giving you some performance, so you could consider it. But be careful, a PC with DDR5 RAM will cost much more than a PC with DDR4 RAM. A combo of 16 GB of RAM and motherboard of the intermediate chipset will cost you about 150 euros in DDR4, and with DDR5 we could be talking about 300 euros. That 150 euros difference could be invested in a higher-end graphics card, and possibly the improvement obtained with that graphics card would be greater than the improvement you get from the RAM. It is just a note that I think it is important for you to take into account. This is why I say that DDR5 RAM can be worth it, but almost only in the high end. In conclusion, the tests tell us that it is very important to choose a good RAM configuration, being especially relevant to have dual channel and good frequencies. Tasks such as professional editing will always require more capacity, so starting from 32 GB in dual channel would be the best choice. DDR5 still needs to come down in price, but it is the future, and in the coming months we will see how it will gradually gain ground over DDR4, although there are still not too many differences and the price is not worth it in the lower ranges. I know this is the third time in this video, but if you have reached this point you have an incredible merit, it is clear that you want to learn and not fail when buying your new PC. I just ask you to leave your comment, saying what you thought of this video, did it help you? What RAM are you going to install in your next gaming PC? I'll be reading you all in the comments. Also, if you liked everything we've covered, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and follow us on all the other TikTok or Instagram accounts. That said, We'll see you with more and better content coming soon, so keep an eye on us. See you next time, bye.